morning. What a beautiful day it is to be in the house of the Lord. If we have any guests here visiting us, we would love to offer you a, a free gift. So whenever you exit out to your left-hand side, as you exit, there is a guest service center, and we would like to give you a gift and just show you our appreciation for you being here and joining in and worship this Sunday. All of our normals, uh, everybody else like myself that's here, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's, it's a blessing to be here with brothers and sisters, lifting up one another as we lift up praises to the King who is worthy to be praised this day. Uh, as we, a uh, reminder, just to sign the red books there at the end, pass it on down, and just let everybody know you are here as we share information. As we look at our announcements, I want to uh, lift up the, uh, the bags. If you did not see, uh, they have the yellow bags. Some of you I see have already grabbed some. Um, and just an encouragement to get those bags and give a love offering if you can. Uh, they're still free as far as I know. I have not heard any different. Um, also, a reminder this week, uh, we are going to be wrapping up our normal weekly events such as our Wednesday night uh, family ministry. We're going to close that down for the through the summer months there, and then also our Thursday night dinner and devotional. So come and get one more good celebration before we head into summer. And speaking of summer, there is a special event coming up, and we're going to have an announcement about that uh, dealing with VBS, Melinda. Good morning. Jennifer, what are you doing? I'm looking for people to go on a safari with us. When? July 10th through 14th. Why don't you give them all the details? Sure. It's our Vacation Bible School, and it's this summer, July 10th through the 14th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. each day. It's called Proclamation Safari, and we need volunteers to help us teach these children about Jesus. It will be so much fun. Hey, I thought I saw a Seminole Indian tribe out on the plains. Oh, I'm sure you didn't see a Seminole tribe. The gators got rid of all of them. But there is a sign-up sheet in the Narthex for anyone that would like to volunteer to help us with VBS. We will be in the Narthex after this service, so come out and talk to us and sign up. What will we be doing the week of the safari? We will have singing, games, crafts, snacks, and learning about Jesus. There will be a special water day on Friday and maybe an actual safari through our woods. Sounds great. I can't wait. Let me look for some volunteers. Wow, I think I see two bald eagles. <laughs> no, that's just my dad and Pastor Eddie. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun the week of VBS, so please join us and sign up to help. It will be a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> we hope all of you will be involved with us. That's always a great week and a celebration as we share Jesus with these children. I told them at the earlier services that's two strikes against those two wonderful ladies already this morning, so we'll be praying for them. At this time, dear friends, we uh, open our altar um, for our prelude, and we um, are going to um, have uh, alkalite. We're so excited. Uh, Leah is here today. So as we begin the prelude, she's going to light the candles. And if anybody wants to come to the altar and kneel or make the place where you are a place of prayer today, the title of the prelude is Fight the Good Fight.
Can we all say amen? Matt always blesses us with a beautiful prelude and postlude. We normally have our Stephen leaders give us our invocation once a month. Miss Liz, if you'll come. We are meeting on the third Sunday to do that instead of the second Sunday because last week uh, was Mother's Day. And we always on that special Sunday like to mention that the bulletin board is new every month to my left as you exit out. And uh, there's information about this wonderful ministry called Stephen Ministry. And if you have any questions, Liz is here after the service, and you're more than welcome to share with her. Liz? Good morning. Good morning. Our sign outside says that we are a Stephen Ministry congregation. Stephen Ministry belongs to the whole church, Mm. not just Stephen ministers. Our church mission statement is to building the kingdom of God in everything we do. Stephen Ministry helps to support and carry out that mission by caring for hurting people. It's a central part of our mission and our ministry. Stephen Ministry is not just another program that happens to be in our church. It is an ongoing ministry that seeks to serve God and build and bring Christ's healing love to those that are hurting and are facing life's challenges. We provide one-on-one Christian confidential care. So please keep this vital ministry in your prayers. If you or someone you know needs Christian support and caring, please let any of the Stephen leaders know and we will follow through. And in case you don't know our Stephen leaders, Pastor Eddie is our, our main Stephen leader, Irene Brew, Holly Fisk, Jane Peebles, Roger Blanton, Frank Pfeiffer, and myself. Thank you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day where we can gather together to give you praise and worship. Through spending time in your presence, we can experience the reality of being perfectly and eternally loved. Let us rest in your loving care as you fill us with peace that only you can give. Help us respond to you, to your glorious presence by the worship in your, by worshiping in spirit and in truth. Please bless this service today, dear Father. May it be pleasing in your sight. We pray in your great name, Jesus. Amen. morning. If everyone will stand and join me this morning for our hymn of praise, we're going to turn to page 318 and we'll do the first, second, and the last verses of Christ is Alive. Christ is
Responsive reading our Psalter this morning, which can be found on page 792, Psalm 68, one, verses 1 through 4. Let God arise. Let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As slowly be driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. join with me this morning in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We have a special treat this morning before we go into our intercessory prayers. We have a number of folks joining our congregation. So I'm going to ask those that are joining if they would, wouldn't mind coming down front here. And we are going to share our vows together. Uh, these vows were put together by a couple of us. And uh, actually, uh, the one who did most of the homework here was Dot Chadwick. She was our main speaker at the Celebrate uh, Women yesterday, and that was such a great success in ministry and kindness and in love. And so these four vows emphasize who we are as global Methodists and the Word of God. And so these are strong Christians. They come to us from various areas here. We're so glad to have Gerald and Vicki Pike and Danny and Janet McDowell and Stephen Struckman and Lisa Sly. So glad to have them, and Roz is our chairperson, and so we're just delighted to have you. The first two questions you answer with I do, and the last two with I will, and this is your public profession, as the Bible says, before the congregation of your faith, if you will follow along. 
Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, accepting the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, and reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? According to the grace given you through the sacrifice of our Lord, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, promise to serve and represent Him as your Lord, and remain faithful to His church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. As members of Christ's universal church, Will you be loyal to this church and its congregation by faithfully participating in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service to strengthen its ministries? I will. Will you acknowledge the Bible in its entirety as the inspired Word of God, agreeing that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, and that we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. In addition, will you strive to adhere to the words of Jesus, do to others what you would want them to do to you. This is what was written in the law and in the prophets. Through the acknowledgement of this vow, will you hold to the principles of God's holy word, study them, follow them, and honor them. I will. Congregation out there and choir here, if you will hold your hands toward these dear folks, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing these dear folks into our family. Father, we know that they are all very strong in their faith. They have blessed us already in many aspects. We pray that as their spiritual journey continues to grow, that we might enhance that by our daily walk in the Word of God. We pray that the flow of their spiritual lives will end up blessing us, the entire church, community, and world. Your blessings be upon them now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And may all of God's people say, let's welcome our new members. We have our new emblem of the Global Methodist Church that is going to be going up on our new sign very, very soon, and a packet for our new members, and I hope where they're sitting, at the end of the service, you'll have an opportunity to turn around and greet them and show your appreciation to them and our chairperson, Roz, for all of her homework and hard work as well. Let's greet them once again, and you may be seated. But Justin, you may have the prayers there. What a blessing that is to have new members come into the church, new members to become a part of this local community, this local family. And what a blessing that is to see the church growing in numbers. And we pray that we don't only grow in numbers, that we grow closer, most importantly, to our Lord and Savior this day. And we just want to continue to give him all honor and glory and praise as we think about things that we get to celebrate and give God the praise for this past Friday. Just a few days ago, we celebrated our very own Harmony Preschool, their VPK graduation, and what a blessing that was. And Eddie and myself, through a chapel, get to give them little stories via a frog and a dog, and little stories of Jesus. And I just pray, and I want to add those to our prayers as we go in, that those seeds plant in these kids, we don't know when they will ever step foot in a church again. You never know. And as they've graduated and head into the normal school system, we just want to ask God's blessing upon them. And as we know, as they go through the school system, they will also eventually graduate from the high school system. And we have graduates of our own through our church. We have Nicole that graduated. We also have uh, Matthew Rapp that is going to be going up to Vanderbilt. And I looked at his GPA. It was given to me, and I just scratched my head, and I said, I didn't know numbers went that high in GPA. So... uh, God has blessed him, and, and we just pray for his hand. And also, uh, Wesley, that is one of our alkalites and all, uh, especially for the 930 service, he also graduated. So we want to add those to our prayer requests and to our families that are going to have children that are going to be probably leaving the home and just another transition in life as God gives us different ways and moves us. 
And I'm experiencing that myself as the Lord is going to be moving us on here uh, in a few weeks uh, back up to Missouri. So we know the Lord's hand is behind everything if we just place our lives in his hands. And I know that as I read off these names here, we are placing these names in, a, in the hands of the Almighty that can do something better than any of us can do. But God listens whenever we call out and lift these names up to him. So I confidently this morning lift these names knowing that we have a servant Lord that will listen and that will intercede. As I lift up Barb Eulinger, we want to pray for her and her husband Jim as she has been placed on hospice. And we just want to continue to pray for her. I want to pray for Anna back there. I see her here today as her husband Lynn has gone on across the River Jordan. But she is here celebrating his life and just what that means to her. She has a blessed assurance this day and comes to a house of worship where we all can lift up praises to know where we are going to go one of these days. And what a blessing that is. We'll lift up Terry Towers, Nancy Riley also, uh, Ivan Robinson. Violet Johnson and on Carol Meredith, various ones that have been through procedures and different things this past week and are doing well. We want to continue to ask for God's healing there. And we have other tests upcoming this week for Beverly Snyder and for Steve Willis and for Al Gillette. And we're just going to trust that God's hand is in there before they've ever had these testings. And we know that God's hand is working as he is in each and every one of our lives this very day. And we just need to place it there and give him and trust in him today. As my brother Bobby comes up and prays, uh, we want to continue to lift up the blessing of having Bobby. Again, I've lifted this up at all three services, the blessing I've had to hear Bobby pray. Here's just, i got to get my Bobby prayers. It's just something about the way that he can minister through his prayers to the Heavenly Father. And I know that we have a father that listens, and I can just feel the spirit moving whenever Bobby prays. And I'm thankful that Bobby made it back home to us safely as we prayed for him and Chip as they went up to Atlanta. And I'm thankful I get to hear Bobby pray one more time this Sunday. Bobby, if you'd lead us to the throne room. Thank you, Justin, for those um, announcements. Um, before I, I go into um, our, our prayer time, I'd like to add our, our own Tom Dystra that does our crosses, his mom was being seen last night for some abdominal pain. So we want to keep Tom's mom, Dorothy, on our prayer concern uh, today and on our minds. And also I got a good praise report. Um, Miss Mary Sink over here that uh, got to tell you a little bit about Miss Mary. I went to the thrift store to, to fill it, uh, sign up for a volunteer, you know. And she said, Bobby, you can volunteer, but not while I'm here, you know. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've, been, we've been praying for Mary. I, I spoke to her briefly, and her procedure went well. Yeah. So Mary, good to, good to see you, and uh, I'll work around your schedule at the thrift store. <laughs> and uh, everything going to be all right. So as we go into our, um, our prayer concern, our, our time, um, as Justin stated, our, our altar is always open. And, and I know our hearts are a little heavy after hearing our announcement that Justin's going to be going uh, back up north. But we have enjoyed him this far. Let's give Justin a round of applause. <laughs> we have enjoyed and He has been a blessing him and his family has been a blessing uh, to us uh, uh, this far. And we know God has his hands on Justin. Yes. And Justin, we appreciate all that you've, you've given us, all that you've shared with us. Your time is being with us. So as Matt played softly, um, our, our, again, our altar is open for you to come and stand. Uh, I'm gonna stand for Tom's mom, Miss Dorothy, today. What a beautiful time that we have right now. Um, just come to the altar. I know you brought something today that you don't care to take back. And the Bible tells us to cast our cares. So as we bow our heads, we'll go to our Heavenly Father. Father, we come to you today. But after, the, after hearing those announcements, Father, we realize how blessed we are. Father, because our name could have been on that list today. But you smile on us once again. You allowed us to come to a place 
a place of worship. Father, a place of acceptance. Father, you accept us just as we are. Your word says, come as you are. And Father, we come today to give, oh, to give back a portion of what you've given us. But we know we can never repay you for all that you've done. You sent your only son, Jesus, your only begotten son, to save a sinner like me. And Father, how grateful you are. And right now we say thank you for all that you've done. Father, we say thank you in advance for all that you're going to do. The names that Justin lifted up, all of us that are in attendance right now, those that are tuning in online, Father, those that are on bending knees right now, calling on the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Father, we call on that name for comfort. We call on that name for guidance. We call on that name for forgiveness right now. Father, we ask that you come in the house because you're welcome here. Father, have your way. Somebody brought something from home. Somebody brought something from afar to give back to you. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We ask that you have mercy on all of us right now. Father, let mercy reign through the house. Let it rain down from the heavens. Cleanse all of us, Father, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. And Father, we say thank you just for who you are. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way. Father, you didn't have to do it, but you did. We thank you for keeping us in good health, still in our right mind, still in the need of serving you, a God who hears our cry, a God who wipe away the tears, a God who guide us, a God of forgiveness when we go astray. But Father, right now, again, all the names that we lifted up, somebody needs you right now. Somebody needs you right now. Somebody's calling on your name right now. Father, we ask that if you go in the hospitals, go in the room, somebody's looking to the hills, that's cometh their health. Father, we know our faith cometh from you. Father, we thank you for your healing. We thank you for your anointing right now. Somebody's battling drug addiction. Father, we ask that you intervene. Somebody have relationship issues. We ask that you be their guide. Oh, Father, have mercy. Father, we ask that you look on those that heading up our BBS Vacation Bible School, Melinda, Jennifer. Father, we thank you for the both of them. And and the entire team. Father, our little ones. Father, your word said they're our future. Father, you said to teach a child in a way. When they get old, they won't depart. Father, so we ask that they stay in the church. We ask that they stay in the word. We ask that they trust and obey. Father, only if we would trust in you, everything is all right. Father, as we come to the close of this prayer, Father, we lift up our silent prayers to you. We ask that you just come in the room. Father, we ask that you just have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. As we sing the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, which are in heaven, Hallowed be that name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread, and forgive those as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would stand this morning as we read 
from a beautiful, beautiful book in a bigger book called the Bible. Words from Peter, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And to the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Let us remain standing for the bringing forward of our offering as we sing the doxology together. Heavenly Father, we know that you can make something big happen out of something small. You take a mustard seed. That's all the faith we need, dear Lord. And you take our offering that may seem like the size of a mustard seed compared to the blessings you have blessed us with. But you will take that and you will multiply it and multiply it and multiply it. And may you receive all the glory and honor through that because you are a powerful and awesome God. We praise you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing for our next hymn of worship this morning. If you'll join me for our hymn of preparation this morning on page 369, and we'll do the first and third verses of uh, Blessed Assurance. <laughs> you love that hymn? Amen. Amen. You may be seated as the choir gets ready to sing for us. I wanted to announce that last Sunday we mentioned we had an offering for a family outside of our church where a young mother was killed, and we all prayed for the family. We have some connections in our church here to them, but the offering we took over to their house the other evening, it was a young mother that died leaving four little children and her husband, they go to Riverland Baptist, but your offering was $1,750. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
What, a, what an outreach of family, of depending on one another, helping each other out. Let's enjoy our choir. Amen and amen and amen. So good to see all of you gathered here today. I want you to know, as we've already hinted and spoken the last few weeks, that uh, next Sunday is Justin and Jennifer and their two lovely daughters and rosy dogs <laughs> last day here at the church. So I've asked him to preach all three sermons uh, next Sunday morning and to wear him out as much as possible. Uh, and then June the 1st, they will be departing to Missouri, where he will be uh, working with his father at the church there, uh, and they'll be back in the community, and it's just, it is the Lord's will. As much as we're going to miss them, it is the Lord's will, and I've kidded him quite a bit to say that I know during the first snowstorm that he's going to be on the phone wondering uh, if the uh, job is still vacant here in Florida, and we would, we would welcome him back with open arms. And so we have put a basket at the member center today and next Sunday, and it has cards and envelopes. And if any of you would like to write a note, there is a prayer quilt out there for their family. You can do that as well. Uh, if you want to make an offering to them, you can put it in one of those envelopes 
uh, this week and our next Sunday morning and drop it in there. You can bring a card from home. It's fine, too. You can make a check out to him personally or to the church, and we'll make sure 100% goes to his family. So we just wanted to offer that uh, for him. Uh, as he mentioned in the announcements, this is our last Wednesday and Thursday of our regular activities for the summer months that we have in those evenings uh, in the Bible studies and the worship services. And at the Adam and Eve class on Wednesday, we're going to be doing our goodbyes to uh, their family at that time as well. So that's going to be kind of a great celebration. Now, next Sunday is also Pentecost, and it's the one Sunday in the year where we turn our pyramids red uh, to symbolize the Holy Spirit. So we encourage all of you, if you have something red to wear and you've just been itching to wear it, now is the time. And it's a great witness to the community, too, because the red on that Sunday does symbolize uh, the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Can we all say amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again so much for your sweet Holy Spirit, and we just pray that you guide us and lead us and take care of us as only you can. We are going to miss Justin so much, and so we go ahead and even pray at this time, as Bobby did in our intercessory prayer. This is going to be quite a week, as the previous weeks have been, in preparation and them selling their house and getting uh, everything together. Uh, and saying farewell to dear friends. Father, we know that they will be part of our family here at this church forever. So just a blessing on them as only you can. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. You see a cane in my hand. And it's not to whack Justin on the head so that he can't go to Missouri. It uh, ties in with the sermon, Trust Him, today. Um. When I was putting together the sermon, we put the titles together a couple months ahead of time following the lectionary, uh, and the choir then uh, has the information when I get it to June, <laughs> and Andy, when he gets it in the back there, I'm late sometimes, uh, but to get all that out to our liturgists and to those that are doing the prayers and uh, special music, it all ties together. Um, so when I was working on this concept of trust him, and of course, him is Jesus. We know that. Um, how do we do that today? I think Peter gives us some great ideas in this passage that we have. Now, when I was working on the sermon, the first thing that came to me, it's kind of humorous to me now, when I was in Kentucky um, back a number of years ago, I'd lived up there as a child and um, I, was, I went back up there to go to school and took uh, two little churches as well. Great experience there uh, in that light. Um, but after two years of schooling, you have to come back to Florida, our, my home conference, for ordination. And we had to do a tremendous amount of work and preparation. And then you have to meet with 30 ministers to give approval uh, to be a deacon. And that's just the setup of the United Methodist Church. And then you serve for two years and you can apply for elders orders. It's different in other denominations, but that's just the way it was in the United Methodist Church. There were four from Florida. And so we decided to ride back together. One of the uh, young men I knew, the other two I, I really didn't know. I'd met them, but I didn't really know them. But they said they'd like to drive and uh, save us gas and we'd ride together. And they wanted to come straight from Kentucky and we were up in uh, Wilmore, which is close to Lexington, if anybody's familiar with that area. And so we had to drive all the way straight through, you know, and I thought, wow, that'll take us a while. Did not take as long as I thought it would take. I have to tell you, I sat in the back seat and the driver looked at me and he said, you need to put on your seatbelt. And I thought, well, of course, it's your car, you know, seatbelts are good. And I had not ridden that fast on 75 since I was a kid going way too fast driving down the road. And so I looked at the fellow that I knew sitting beside me in the back seat because we were all going to take turns. And I said, I'm not going to drive this fast. They were going between 90 and 100 miles an hour. I'm serious. They, I just thought, I can't believe this. I wondered if they were Christians. You know, I thought they can't be traditional Christians driving that fast in the car there. Well, we stopped uh, somewhere down the road and to go to the restroom and to get a Coca-Cola. And so they... Uh, I, it still wasn't my turn to drive, and so I got back in the back seat again. The next driver looked back at me, and he said again, put on your seatbelt. And I thought, 
A seatbelt's not going to do me any good if we crash at 90 to 100 miles an hour, you know, up and down this crazy highway there. So that story came back to me. Well, we got there, obviously, safely. Uh, came back to me as I was preparing for this sermon about what does it mean to trust in the Lord? You know, you, we say we trust in God, yet we put seatbelts on. Does that mean we don't trust in God? You know? I have a cane before me here, and uh, Buddy and Cheryl, uh, sitting back there, folks in our church, and they, Buddy gave this to me a couple weeks ago, and all of you know I've been struggling a bit with my back being out again, and it's much better now. A lot I've leaned on this cane, you know, uh, it, uh, when I walk, and especially taking my puppy dogs out early in the morning and in the evening. Now, I love this cane. It's cedar. And uh, Buddy was sharing with me at uh, the, the carver. Uh, it was a Christian, and it says, Jesus is Lord on it. You'll have to look at it. It's beautifully carven, uh, carved wood, and it says, uh, He is Lord, uh, and he, Jesus is love. It's just powerful. The cross is on here. It's just, just amazing. It's a beautiful piece of work, and it, I appreciate so much Buddy giving this to me. It was just, it's been great. It was great a couple of weeks ago. I keep it right by the door. I use it all the time, all the time. Now, why would I use it? Why not, if I'm trusting the Lord, what am I using a cane for, right? You know? Well, I'll tell you what I use it for most of the time. Early in the morning, late in the evening, especially early in the morning, there are spider webs all over the place. And especially as we go into the summer months. And I have found that this is just the right size as I've got the dogs <laughs> to walk. I'm, I'm glad it's dark so nobody can see me out there just moving up and down the street. I have done the Holy Ghost dance too many times bumping into a spider web. I hate spider webs, right? Well, couldn't I just pray that God would remove the spider webs to trust him? Couldn't I just pray? I don't need a cane, right? I can just pray and God would do that. What about the poor spiders? Is the, is the spider out there praying, Lord, may my web <laughs> do what it needs to do today? You know? If we say we trust in the Lord, is there things on our side of the platform we need to be doing? I think there is. I think trusting in the Lord is not just blind faith. I think it's following the Word of God. I think it's seeking the Lord with all your heart. I think it's gathering together in worship. I think it's being attentive and alert, the A of our ABCs that Peter gave to us today about things that are happening. How can we be alert for the things of God? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is what Peter says at the opening verse of this passage. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. I think we as Christians need to constantly practice humbling ourselves in the sight of the Lord. How do you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord? Practice the spiritual disciplines. Pray, pray, pray. I think I've told you before that every morning, part of my early morning prayers, I'm still able to physically kneel. And so I physically kneel before King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It does me good to bow down this physical body before Jesus. He is my Lord. And I'll quote a few Bible verses as I kneel before him. Now, as I get older, I have to have a little help. Cain, you know, getting back up with those knees and back. But I kneel before him. I mentioned earlier about coming together in worship. I mentioned about prayer, Bible reading, reading the Word of God. We've got a, a, um, a program coming up very soon. Uh, that David uh, has brought to our attention, David Small. I'm going to put an article about it in the newsletter that's coming out 1st of June, maybe next week if we can, or it'll probably be the following week. But how we can partner with someone else to read the Bible and to get someone else's opinion, somebody that's reading Matthew while you're reading Matthew. And it doesn't have to be somebody in the church. And you take this very seriously so that you can hear the Word of God and that you can hopefully, at least weekly or maybe monthly, talk with that person and just say, hey, what did you get out of Matthew? What did you get out of Genesis? What did you get out of this passage of Scripture? It's great. It's another encouragement for the Bible to be prioritized and who we are as Christians, and especially as global Methodists. Amen? The Bible tells us to love, to love one another. I believe that's how we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. I believe that's how we trust Him 
Because not everybody in the world is lovely. And we are called to love them the best of our ability. And when we don't love them the best of our ability, we are to repent and call out to God. And he will forgive us and abundantly pardon. And then we are to try to mend those ways. Matthew 18 is very clear that if your brother or sister has aught against you, my dear brother here and I talked about this in the choir, about how important that verse is. If somebody has something against you, you ought to go to them and make it right. Make it right. I know that's hard, but it is so important. And I think it humbles us in the sight of the Lord. I thought about the great story of Esther in the Old Testament and how that, that Esther, when she had a tremendous need, if you remember that story, and how that persecution was coming to her people, how that she called her community, her neighbors, and she said, pray how we need each other, how we need each other. What a sign of the Old Testament that we need each other. And that takes me to the B this morning of the ABCs, the believers Peter talks about. You know that believers, brothers and sisters in Christ, they are suffering, struggling just like you. And then Peter says, because of that, you knowing that, that knowledge, you resist the devil. Now, when you just look at that passage for a moment, just try to give an exegesis of just that passage. How do those two come together? I mean, the idea that if I know that my Brothers and sisters, the believers are suffering like I'm suffering. How does that help me resist the devil? <laughs> you know, how do they tie together? Well, have you ever wondered how many times the Bible emphasizes two or three together? When Jesus was sending out witnesses to witness and they had the miracle and power of God, he said, go two by two. The Word of God says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Brother Bob White, who sent me an article and a few others the other day, he's the chairman of our council at the present time, it lifted up this story of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, a great story in the Old Testament. And I, they brought up something in that article I never thought about before, that every time you hear about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they're always together always together. You don't hear one name without the other two. Is it possible that they could have stood up strong for their faith like they did if they had not had their brotherhood, believers together? We need each other, church. We need each other. That's why I always appreciate the AA programs here, people trying to help people. That's why we've started the Celebrate Recovery program here. People helping people. That's why we're going to be entertaining more accountability groups coming from the Global Methodist Church. Small groups meeting together so that we can help one another. Christianity was never intended to be a, a one-person faith, a one-person religion, just you and Jesus. You've got a good thing going if you've got some others with you. Think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He wasn't even there alone. This is God we're talking about now. He wasn't there alone. Peter, James, and John. And when you have close friends, close connections, people that you trust, people that you can be honest with, you can be frustrated with them. Jesus was frustrated with them. This was his inner circle. And if Jesus needs an inner circle, don't you think we do too, church? Oh, my goodness gracious. He told them, he said, you're sleeping. I need you awake. I'm having a bad time here. I need your prayers. You know, he was honest with them. We can be honest with our sisters and brothers. We need this. We're going to talk about this more and more the next six months as we finish out this year of the Bible of our church in the global Methodist church. Now, that takes us to the C of the ABCs today. Cast all your care upon him. For he careth for you. Don't you love that verse? Cast all your care, all your anxiety upon him, for he careth for you. Bobby, usually when he does the prayer for us, he'll say, God is good. And all the time. Did you know that's what it means? You can cast your cares, your anxiety on God because you can trust that God is. Man. You can just trust he hears you. 
He knows you. He knows your name. He knows your name. He loves you. Do I need God? Yes. Do I need you? Yes. Just about everybody I bump into now, they'll say, how are you doing? I'll say, I'm doing okay. Say, really? How's your family doing? Terrible. I'm honest with them. You all know this already. Our two oldest boys and their struggles. And I tell them, and I say, because I need you to pray. I need you to pray for me. We need each other. Is Christianity a crutch? Well, if it is, I need it. I need to lean on it heavy. A couple months ago, I drove down to the first church I pastored in 1983. The church has uh, been closed by the United Methodist Church in Seoul. And it's, uh, it's some type of Far Eastern temple. There's shrines around it now. I don't know. It was so sad. I, and I met up with some of those old members. Some of them I hadn't seen in 40 years. Some of them look old. My gosh. <laughs> and uh, so we met and talked. And they were talking about how sad that was that the church is gone. And I remembered who um, started that church. Reverend R.C. Joyner. He was a... Um, strawberry farmer from Plant City, went to World War II, came back and became a minister and started that church. And he had retired when I went there in 83, but went back out to his strawberry farms. And man, do they have good strawberries, I'll tell you. And uh, so he, uh, he was at the first church as the associate pastor or the visitation pastor. And uh, he would come over and do a lot of programs for us. He was such a great mentor. And of his age, and this happens to all of us, it's happening to a lot of us now. Uh, I was there when his spouse died and with the funeral, and then his two brothers as well. So it was so, such a hard time. And I remember R.C. standing at the pulpit of that old church a few months after those deaths and just saying, he always called us, my beloved, my beloved. He said, my beloved, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. You know, as I thought about that, and I thought about this passage, cast all your care upon him for he careth for you, trusting the Lord, and now that church is gone. And it dawned on me, that church is not gone. The church building is gone. Our sea's not gone. I'm not gone. Those that have went on to heaven, they're not gone. The church, brothers and sisters, we are alive. We are alive. We're leaning on each other, depending on each other, making our way through. Trust him. Trust him. Let us pray. Father, your word says we must believe that you are and that you faithfully reward those who diligently seek you. Your word says that everything will work together for good for those who love you, those called according to your purpose. Father, you're a good, good God. You are worthy to be trusted. We lay everything at the foot of the cross. We trust you. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And may all of God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. Let's all please stand for the closing of our service. And as we mention every Sunday, friends, the altar is open or you can make the place where you're standing an altar of prayer. Please join me for I have a benediction on page 354 and we'll sing the first and last verses of I Surrender All.
Heavenly Father, we thank you as we sing there to fill me with thy love and thy power, with thy sacred flame, dear Lord, as well. Your sacred flame, as we took the light of this world, dear Jesus, help us to take that. Help us to trust you in the midst of everything. Help us to not lean on our own understanding, on our own ways. Help us to lean on your everlasting love, on your everlasting power. Help us to lean on you with everything we've got. You will not crumble. You will hold us up, and therefore you will be glorified as you hold us up as a light to the world of your goodness. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. Let us remain standing for our postlude. Wasn't it beautiful having an alkalite in our service today? Leah is the daughter of Melinda, that's our administrative assistant. Leah, thank you so much for making this special for us today. Please remain standing, if you will, as we do have our postlude. Justin and I will be in the narthex to greet you if you would like. And the title today of our postlude is <laughs> The Lord Will Provide. Justin. Wonderful week. Don't forget Pentecost Red next Sunday morning.